Let her continue there. Praise the Lord. Amen. End time preparation. End time preparation. Now, for those people who are not ready, one thing is that Jesus is coming back again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus is coming back again. And we need to know how to prepare. Hallelujah. This is not the gospel people want to hear. Someone would want to hear financial growth. I'm going to tell you how to prepare. Jesus is coming back again. Praise the Lord. I'm your neighbor, neighbor. Jesus is coming back again. So you must prepare for the end time. Praise the Lord. End time preparation. And I want us to look at the book of First Thessalonians 2.19. We look at verse 2 Thessalonians 2 19. I want us to, because Jesus is coming back, and the people of God must be ready for his coming. The church must be ready for his coming. And um, today, you know, I'll, I'll touch on some things that if you're not born again, or if you're born again and your life is normal, you need to make your life not normal. Make it in Christ. Praise the Lord. You make your life to be a life that Christ Jesus dwells. So, uh, 1 Thessalonians 2.19. 1 Thessalonians 2.19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Praise the Lord. Amen. I want us also to get ready to read 1 Timothy 4.1-3. 1 Timothy 4. One, two, three. First Timothy four, one, two, three. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. First two, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own con concerns seared with a hot iron. Verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Praise the Lord. Now, let's also look at Second Timothy 3 from verse 1 to 8. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3. Unloving, unforgiving, slanders with, without self-control, brutal, despisers of God, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded with, down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Verse 8, now as Janis and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. Praise the Lord. And allow me to read. Thank you very much. Let's clap for her. I want us to also look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. And it says this. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of the mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord. We will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep, for the Lord himself will come down uh, from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet, and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise again. After that, those who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so 
we will be with the Lord forever. Encourage one another with these words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Allow me to read for you one more scripture, then I will we'll get in. Praise the Lord. One more scripture, because I want us just to get some context. Now, verse 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1, tells us, Now, brothers and sisters, the, time, the times and dates we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting our own faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. End time preparation. Now, we are being told in the Bible, and we've read in the book of 1 Timothy 4, and uh, we also looked at it in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 8. We are told about the end times. What will be happening? It says in the last days, there will be perilous times. Praise the Lord. There will be perilous times. And uh, the book of Timothy tells us a number of things that we are seeing in that perilous times. And we are told in that time, there will be people who will abandon their faith. Praise the Lord. The last day, people will do what? They will abandon their faith. Have you seen Christians saying, I don't want God anymore? Praise the Lord. People will abandon their faith. We are being told that people will follow deceiving spirits. They will follow deceiving spirits. So if someone hears a lie, they would prefer to, hear, to walk with the lie than to believe the truth. Praise the Lord. That, those are, are signs of the end times. It says people will be, and they will, they will be taught things by demons. So instead of being taught the word of God, people are being taught by what? By demons. There will be a lot of hypocrisy and people will lose their conscience. Some, are, some of you say conscience. Conscience. Praise the Lord. People will lose, lose what? Their conscience. So we'll be having a deceiving spirit that will be within. People will abandon their faith. People will follow deceiving spirits. You will prefer to, to love the, 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 a lie than to, to follow what is the truth. People will prefer being taught by demons. There will be hypocrisy. And people will move in their own manner of lawlessness. And the Timothy gives us a number of things again, a number of disorders that will be there in the last days. Praise the Lord. But then, we as God's children, we need to know how to prepare for the last days. Hallelujah. We need to know how to do what? How to prepare in the last days. Because Jesus is coming back again. And when Jesus is coming back again, he's not coming back as a lamb that is being slain again. He was slain. He conquered the, the, the death. Praise the Lord. He is alive. Hallelujah. He is alive. He is not dead. Hear me carefully. Jesus is alive. And he's coming back again. Praise the Lord. He's coming back. And I pray that today you listen to this carefully. He is coming back again. And it is true. End time days, there will be a lot of deception. There will be a lot of deception. Lies. Adultery. People will live the way they want to live. I don't care how I live, so long as I live. People will want to do their things. People will want to go and be adulterous, move out with other people's wives, move out with, with single women, be, fornicate all over. Those will be the desires of men the last days. But then God's children must prepare for it. Praise the Lord. God's children must prepare for the last days. 
Now, there are two dimensions of how Jesus will come. I call the first one the first advent and the second advent. So the first advent is what we call rapture. Praise the Lord. See, to my summer here. Ephesians, uh, we've read 1 Thessalonians 4. Remember we've read that one? 1 Thessalonians 4. 4, 13 to 18. Praise the Lord. Rapture. That's the first advent. And people should be ready. Hallelujah. We should be ready. We are being told what? Those who have died first, will be die will, what will happen to them? Ah, I'm Kusoma. Those who have died first, they'll be taken. And then you is alive. And now, this first advent or the, or the rapture, Jesus will not come on earth. He will come in the air, the clouds. We'll meet him in the clouds, the air. Praise the Lord. Because at this point in time, he will be coming for those who are in Christ. For those who are in Christ. He'll be coming for those who are what? In Christ. So if you are not in Christ, I can assure you, you will miss the first advent. You will miss the rapture. And that's why Bible tells us, we work out our salvation with what? With fear and trembling. Knowing that the days are what? The days are evil. We are living in times of evil. There is evil all over. But the people of God must live knowing that Jesus Christ is coming back again. As I preach, I must preach knowing that Jesus Christ is coming back again. As you hear the word, you must hear the word knowing that Jesus Christ is coming back again. Praise the Lord. We cannot live our lives the way we have desired. Like the world. With all forms of vilefulness. All forms of lust. I cannot be here preaching and the next day you are seeing me somewhere hiding with some, some, some what do you call them? What do you call those things? I heard you, you are the ones who know. There's a word you use. Kororo. Kororo. Yes. Somewhere. So you are always hiding somewhere. You want to live a Christian life and you want also to live like the world. People of God, I want to submit to you, Jesus Christ is coming back again. And the church must prepare for his coming. Hear me carefully. The first advent, rapture, it will be for those who are in Christ who will be taken with him in the, in the air. So if you are living a double standard life, you will not be part of it. And I will tell you what will happen. And I would I tell people this. You'd rather be part, part of the first advent. Praise the Lord. Ukwe wale wa kwanza wale wa mbawa na nani? Na yesu. And that's why we must live, I must live my life with fear and trembling. Whatever I do, I'm not living to show people. I'm living to please Christ. I'm living a holy life to please Christ, not to please men. When you're doing ministry, you do ministry to please Christ, not to please the man of God. To please Christ. That means whether the man of God is there or not, you will serve God. You're not serving to please you people or your parents. You are serving to please him, Christ. Praise the Lord. Because let me tell the people of God. Rapture will come and no one knows. He will come like a thief. Praise the Lord. He will come like a what? Actually, in the Bible, if you look at the scriptures, there is no prerequisite for the rapture. The second advent, the second coming after the rapture, there will, there will be some conditions. But the first advent, there is no condition. He will come like a what? You miss it, you miss it. And I'll tell you what will happen in the next level. Praise the Lord. So we must work out our salvation. This thing of playing Christianity, playing like I'm, I'm, I, I serve God, I love the Lord, but I'm living a double standard. Those days are gone. Because I can tell you, Jesus Christ is coming back again. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is coming back again. So if you want to be part of those who are raptured, 
then you must be in Christ. You must be true to your salvation. Praise the Lord. You must be true to your salvation. I cannot love the world and I want Jesus. I cannot desire the world a bit and love Jesus. I am lying to myself because we, we will see it. it. says two, two will be seated together. One will be taken. Ask a neighbor, will you be the one taken or will you remain? Ask a neighbor. I am seated with you. Will you be the one taken? Praise the Lord. And the church must be prepared for this end time. So rapture is a time when Jesus Christ meets the saints in the air and takes them back in heaven with him. Praise the Lord. And prepares them before and presents them before the Father. Hallelujah. And when this happens, these people who will be raptured will stay with him in heaven for seven years. During these seven years, there will be periods to be a time of tribulation to those who are left on earth. Praise how we how we live our lives. Serving him like never before. I've always said, if God gives a chance to serve, serve him like you don't have a tomorrow. Serve him today like there's no tomorrow. Don't say, I will serve God a bit. I want them to, to know more, to see how I can. Do it now. Don't say, I will serve God tomorrow. Do it now. Praise the Lord. Do it now. So the first advent, which I'm calling the rapture, is where Jesus Christ will come and meet the saints, take them up, take them to heaven, present them to the Father, and there they will be with him for seven years during the period of, of tribulation here on earth. Amen? Here on earth where there will be tribulation. Now, what will happen is once this happens, the rest that will be left on earth will be going through a season of tribulation. And Revelation 17 tells us about the great who. So there will be three and a half years under the torment of the great who, W-H-O-R. And then during that time, the enemy, the Satan, will raise up an agent who will be an antichrist. He will start taking authority. So within the first three and a half years, he will be preparing up. And the Bible tells us he will take over the ten kingdoms of the old Roman Empire. Praise the Lord. He'll do what? He'll take over the ten kingdoms of the old Roman Empire. Now, hear me carefully. During this season, during this season, and that will be before Jesus comes back again, during that season, there will be tough times for people. Tough times for Christians. Tough times for those who stand by, 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 by the Lord. There will be tough times. Praise the Lord. Tough. And during the first three and a half years, the great will, the great will be, be taking over. But then Antichrist, who will be a, an agent of Satan, will take up. He will start raising his power slowly. After the end of the three and a half years, he will now have full power and full control. And what he will do, he will now wage warfare. Against who? The great war. If you look at, at verse 16. And so what will happen is that the Bible tells us that he will take full power. He will take full control. Praise the Lord. But now let me tell you. Let's look at um, 2 Thessalonians 2.7. I want to show you something. Possibly if you can read the whole of it. Please read for us 2 Thessalonians 2. I'm concentrating on verse 7, but let's read from verse 1. I want you guys to people to get something very critical. 2 Thessalonians 2. And my concentration is verse 7. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we ask you, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by the word or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come 
Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will come unless the falling away comes first. The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Verse 6, now, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Praise the Lord. So after rapture, those who are in Christ will be taken. The dead who had died in Christ will be taken. And now we'll be getting into a season where multitudes will be saved through an awakening. You can put these verses down. Second, second, uh, the book of Acts chapter 2 from verse 16 to 12 to 16 to 21 and Revelation 6, 9 to 11. So multitudes will be saved through an awakening. The rest of the people will continue to harden their hearts. The rest will do what? They will continue to harden their hearts. And they will fight those who are born again. Praise the Lord. They will fight those who are born again. But the Antichrist will arise. Praise the Lord. The Antichrist will arise. Now hear me carefully. Verse 7 tells us, there is an hardener one who is an hind, a hindra, an hindrance to the one who, to the lawlessness. So that tells us what? Something is holding the coming of Antichrist. Praise the Lord. Is it government? Government brings order. Is that true? Is that true? But then even Antichrist will have taken over kingdoms. So lawlessness. There's, there's no one who can hinder it from coming. Currently, what is prevailing is the spirit of lawlessness. There's one who is going to come, the Antichrist, who will be, they're calling him the son of perdition. They're calling him the man of sin. The man of what? The man of sin. So, until rapture takes place, it will be difficult for what? For the Antichrist to prevail. Praise the Lord. To be difficult. Because there's a hardener. The hardener withholding the, Lord, the, the, the son of perdition to prevail. Not the government. The Holy Ghost will, not, will still be on earth. Praise the Lord. Even after rapture, he'll still be on earth. Because those who will be left and who will stand with Christ, they'll still need the, the, the Holy Ghost to support them throughout until the second advent. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Ghost will remain. Now, what, what the moment rapture takes place, those who are in Christ, who are they? The church. And now hear me carefully. End times. Warfare against the church will intensify. Be ready. Don't say they don't like us. Warfare against the church will intensify. Because currently, the only hindrance to the manifestation of the Antichrist is what? The church. In those who are in Christ. And so after rapture, those who are in Christ are taken, there is no more hindrance. Praise the Lord. There will be no more hindrance. And the Bible tells us a number of things about the Antichrist. Praise the Lord. A number of things about the Antichrist. And I want us to look at it in that book of 2 Thessalonians 2. The Bible tells us a number of things about the Antichrist. And I want us to look at them. A number of things about the Antichrist. If you look at verse, uh, at, at verse 3, the Bible tells us this. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will, come, will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of loneliness is revealed. So the Antichrist, he will be the opposer of God. He will oppose God. Praise the Lord. He will be a man, but an agent of Satan. He will walk with miraculous powers from Satan. So you'll be seeing a man coming and doing miracles, but not with God. He'll be an agent of Satan. 
Praise the Lord. And by the way, he will be revealed. You know the way they unveil the new president? He will be unveiled. The moment he takes over the ten kingdoms, remember, they will come together with the ten kingdoms and now fight again. Again, it's what? The great hole. According to, to Revelation 17. Praise the Lord. So what will happen is that the people of God now will be under another authority. That's why they're saying the multitudes will be saved by an awakening. He will be an opposer of God. He will exalt himself above God, the Antichrist. So if you see anyone, currently we have the speed of lawlessness. There are people who are agents, but they are not. Praise the Lord. They are agents. So he will exalt himself above God. Verse 4 tells us, he will oppose and exalt himself above everything that is called God. Look, are you hearing that? He will do what? He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God. Or is worshipped. He will accept worship as God. Hello? He will do what? He will accept worship as God. So he will oppose God. He will want to be exalted as God. He will want to be worshipped as God. Praise the Lord. He will claim to be God. You were told here, so that he sets up himself in the temple, proclaiming to be what? He will, he will do what? He will proclaim himself to be God. And look at it. The ones who are raptured, where are they? What are the 24 elders doing? They bow down before him. They worship him. They bow down before him. They worship him. They praise him. They worship him and exalt him. While we back here, unabambana na aliyako. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are there. The good thing that the Bible tells us that those who will remain on earth. Um, is it 7.3? Is that Revelation 7.3 or 14.3? Just check. Um, it tells us that the ones who will be on earth, there will be a seal of God on them. So you will, you, will, you, you will still survive, but you know it is tribulation. Praise the Lord. Amen? There will be a seal on them. The Bible says, the name of the Lord shall be put upon them. Hallelujah. Shall be put a what? Upon them. But also, the economic system of the Antichrist will also prevail. Praise the Lord. The economic system of what? Of the Antichrist will also do what? Will prevail. So he a man. The Antichrist, he will be a man. But he will be killed by Christ Jesus. If you, you have your time, you can look at these scriptures. You can look at these scriptures. Look at Daniel chapter, chapter 7, verse 7. Daniel 8, verse 25. Isaiah 1, 11 verse 4 and Revelation 19, 11 to 21. I want to read for us verse 8 of this chapter. It says this, And then the lawless one, look at this, Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus Christ will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the splendor of his coming. Look at that. He is a man, but yes, he will terrorize people. He will have the support of the ten kingdoms. Of the old, old Roman Empire. Praise the Lord. Amen. He will have the support. So he will be powerful. Very powerful. Praise the Lord. But we are told he will be killed by Jesus. The Bible tells us what here. That the Lord Jesus will do what? Will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Praise the Lord. Only those who are lost will follow Antichrist. Those who are lost, they will follow Antichrist. Now, I want us to understand a few things that I want us to know. Praise the Lord. A few things that I would want us to understand today. So, seven years of tribulation. 
But then after the seven years, there will be the second advent of Christ. He will come. And now this time when Jesus is coming, he's, he will come down on earth. Remember the first time he comes, what he was about to lose. He will come where? In the air. And taken where? And those who are died, dead in Christ will be taken. Those who are alive will be taken. Seven years in heaven, worshiping Jehovah. Hey, what a beautiful. See, I feel like you're walking on a walk. You're Any, what is the use of umenganga napa? Umenganga na lakini iki kujia rapture unapotea uonekani. Praise the Lord. Now, after the seven years, Christ Jesus will descend on earth with the saints. Remember, remember when, when the first during rapture, those who died in Christ will get resurrected bodies. Remember that? And then, those who were born, who were alive, will be, their bodies will be changed. Praise the Lord. Now, the second advent, when he's coming, he will now come down with them. Hallelujah. Hey! People of God, Jesus is coming back again. And the church must be prepared. That's why we must work our salvation with fear and trembling. Imagine coming back with Jesus Christ on earth. And this time he's coming to rule the earth and establish the kingdom of God. And this time he's coming to destroy the devil. Hello? And he will rule for a thousand years. And then neighbor, a thousand years. A thousand? Imagine when we will enjoy heaven, we talk heaven, we rule now to come and rule. Praise the Lord. During the thousand years, <laughs> Satan and his agents will be locked in prison. A thousand years. So during that year, look at this. Is in this the love of God? There will be another chance for people who do not know Christ to know Him. Imagine the love of God that for a thousand years those who do not know him will have another chance to do what? To know him. Praise the Lord. Another chance is in this the love of God that he still wants to establish his kingdom and to make men and women to receive salvation. That's why when we sang that song salvation belongs to our God. God, out of his love, sent his son. And because of that love, he wants every man, every, every woman to know him. Praise the Lord. Every man, every woman to know him. Hallelujah. So before the great day of the Lord, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be revolts and, and, and defections. Praise the Lord. People will increase in defaulting and revolting. Children are revolting against their parents. People will be saying, ah, why should I marry? This wife, I don't need her. I know I'm born again, but I can still marry again. Let me tell you, we are in the last days. So when a man comes, it's their wife, dumps, leave her another one. And they still want to preach. Let me tell you, Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back again. He conquered death. He conquered sin. So you cannot live. Actually, the Bible tells us that those who are in Christ, they crucify the flesh. They do what? They crucify the flesh. Because he conquered it. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered it. And we, the people of God, must be. So this, after the seven years of tribulation, the second advent is when Jesus will be coming back again. The Bible, they were told in the word of God that Christ and the saints, they will leave heaven. And together, they will come down on earth. Praise the Lord. And he will come on earth to now live on earth and fulfill the mission that he has for us. Revelation, I want us to look, you can, if you have time, you can look at Revelation 11. Now, and let me say this. Um, how many of us have ever read the book of Revelation in full? Revelation? 
Now hear me carefully. Now, because you need to understand this. Before the second, this second, second advent of Christ, everything that has been described in Revelation chapter, chapter, chapter 1 up to Revelation chapter 19, verse 21, must happen first. Remember I told you, rapture, no one will know. No one will. But the things written in the scriptures from Revelation chapter 1 up to chapter 19 or, and up to verse 21 must happen first. Praise the Lord. It must happen first. So it's good to understand the scriptures. So that even when you see things happening, you are seeing drums of warfare. So you're told in the last days there'll be what? There'll be drums of what? Of warfare. Now you are seeing Iran and Israel test testing their muscles. Eh? By the way, let me tell you, by the time Christ will be coming in the second advent, they will, Israel will have been, they will have almost taken over a half of Israel. But when Jesus comes, Hallelujah. He will establish his people, Israel. Praise the Lord. So don't be worried. These things will happen. Amen. They will happen. There will be drums of warfare. So, so what you need to do is we pray for the peace. Actually, in the three and a half years, you know Christians will be persecuted a lot. Amen. Then the next three and a half years, when now Antichrist takes over, they will be talking of safety and peace. So they'll come in the name of what? Safety and peace. Let me tell you, there'll be no peace until Jesus comes. He is the true source of peace. Praise the Lord. He is the true source of peace. Now, we as people of God, what must we do to prepare? Be a neighbor, neighbor. What must I do to prepare? Hallelujah. If you can put for us there, First Thessalonians 5. Let's begin from verse 6. Now we need to know how to prepare. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you feeling like you want to be born again again today? Praise the Lord. Kama umekua unacheza salvation imchezo mchezo, you need to work it out. Now, we are told in verse 6 of First Thessalonians, verse Chapter 5, I'll read at verse 6. We have been told this. So then, look at this. So let, 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 let's read from verse 4. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a what? Like a thief. You are chilling off of light and chilling off the day. Praise the Lord. So we do not belong to the night or to darkness. So then, let us not be like others. So we are, the first thing you are to being told is that we should not be asleep. Do not be asleep. Be spiritually alert. I'm your neighbor, neighbor. Do not be asleep. Be spiritually alert. Christians struggle to pray, while the guys who practice witchcraft they don't they don't they take time practicing their things. And you, your source of power is in Christ. And Christ took most of his time praying. Even when he was about to be taken to, to, be taken to the cross, he had the sweat, he actually sweat blood. Do you remember that time? Why? And what was he doing? He was praying. Praise the Lord. He was praying. Do not be asleep. Be alert spiritually. In short, I'm saying, do not be careless. We have been told in the Bible, for us to prepare up in these end times, we must be alert spiritually. Praise the Lord. Not careless. How can a Christian, you call yourself born again, but if Today, you are asked, what was the last time you and Christ had a one-on-one -on -one discussion? When was it last? When last did you speak heart-to-heart -heart with Jesus? I want you to tell you, sister neighbor, some of you are sitting next to your spouses, you might bring off here. Because When last did you speak to Jesus and speak heart-to-heart? 
Tell him, Lord Jesus, what's your next instruction for me, Lord? Lord, I'm here. And this can't happen when there's noise. Praise the Lord. This, it can happen when there is confusion in your life and there's sin all over. You're messing yourself all over. That can't happen. When you're not asleep and spiritually alert, you're having conversations with Christ. Lord Jesus, what would you want me, Lord, to do? When the Lord told me to start holding meetings here in CBD, you know, let me tell you, it was not simple because I know what it means to hold a meeting here. Praise the Lord. But you know what? We will be taking instructions from Jesus. He will tell you, son, daughter, I want you to leave Kenya. I want you to go to Kuala Lumpur. Go and establish the church. You will not look about, look at your job. You will not look at your land. You will not look around and see how you, the Pajero you are driving now. If God says, son, daughter, leave Kenya, go to Somali, you will not say, Lord, but here I am established. Lord, look, look, I have a house, I have a wife, I have children. When you are saying, do not be asleep, it means you are not careless. You are ready to take instructions from Christ. Hello? That means you tell him, Lord, rearrange my life. Change it, change it. Rearrange it. You could be so established in Kenya. When you may come out, kill a huge kosawa Kenya. Then God tells you, no. Leave. Go to Uganda. This will not happen when you are asleep. You remember the unfaithful virgins in the Bible? Matthew 25, you remember? You remember the story? It will not happen. You remember the disciples of Jesus? And Jesus went to pray, preparing for battle, prepare, preparing for what was happening, for, 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 for his, 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 his persecution. They were what? They were asleep. That won't happen. People of God must arise. The end time is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. Are there are men and women who are willing to listen to him and to take instructions because Jehovah God will be giving instructions to his people. He'll tell you, son, 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 arise. Go to Kinshasa. You not tell him, Lord, look, I have land here. I bought land in Kenya. Lord, you do not belong to yourself. It says, I belong to him. The life that I live is not my own. For me to live is Christ. That is how we are preparing for the end time. That if Jehovah wants a man and a woman to send right now to Egypt, there is a man to send. There is a woman to send. When God told me, start CBD, I did, I, there were many questions. We had just established the other, the other side in the Dakota. And you know what it means, eh? Then it tells you start. You just obey. You obey. You say, Jesus, I will obey. Jesus will tell you, daughter, I am, I am sending you. Nakuru, go. You won't say, Lord, but I have a boyfriend here who is supposed to marry me. Let me tell you, that if that boyfriend is from God who should marry you, they will follow you to Nakuru. Praise the Lord. We are living in end times and the people of God must be alert, ready to be sent, ready to receive instructions from the master. Praise the Lord. I don't expect a many amends, but this is the gospel. Praise the Lord. Are there people who are willing that you forget about your riches, forget about everything else, and tell Jesus, I am willing to take instructions. I will not be careless anymore. I will be alert spiritually. Whatever you tell me, I will obey. Some of you, God wants to send you to become missionaries in other countries. Are you willing? There are nations that have never heard about Jesus. I don't have time. I would have shown you what Timothy, uh, Paul told Timothy. You remember? Remember what he was told? Praise the Lord. Amen? God wants men and women who will stand in the gap for nations, praying for those that salvation may go to those countries. Because the Bible says what? That until that go ye into the world, Judea and Samaria, praise the Lord, and preach the gospel. This gospel must reach everywhere. Even to your village. One day I was driving somewhere and I, I looked around. Normally when I drive, I try to look for churches. I couldn't see a church. And I drove for almost two hours. I'm not seeing a church. I was concerned. Kenya, some areas don't have churches. While God is saying, 
can I have my children who can be alert that I can send you and you will obey me? Number two, we are told to be watchful and be alert. And here we have been told, do not permit yourself to be overthrown by temptations. That's why you must be watchful. Praise the Lord. Do not allow yourself to be overthrown by temptations. Be always alert. Live godly in Christ. Praise the Lord. Do not allow yourself to be what? To be overcome by temptations. That's how we are Today you are okay. The next day you are back to pornography. Again, the next day you are okay. The next day you are back to the command. The next day you are okay. The next day you are back to... Hey! Hey! We are told, do not allow yourself to be overthrown by temptations. That's why, be watchful. Amen? Keep observing. Be alert because the enemy, he comes like a what? In the form of a what? A roaring? But he's not a lion. So you must be alert. In you, you carry the one who is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who conquered death? Who fought the battle and made a pathway for you and I? What we have been told, as we prepare for end time, be watchful. Don't always be thrown into temptations. Some of us, we cannot live. You just see legs, you're gone. Hey! Be watchful. You see chest with some biceps. And some of them, they like doing something like this. So you see this king moving this way. And you're like, God of the heavens is, hey, be watchful. Praise the Lord. We have been told the third thing, be sober. And do not be intoxicated with. I'm a neighbor, neighbor. Kama wuna kunyonga kidogo, wachana nayo. We are told to be what? Sober. Praise the Lord. Have you ever asked a drunkard, a drunkard what they did the day before? Will they tell you? Have you ever seen some people who, ne who never smile, but when they are drunk, they laugh all over? Have you seen them? They don't even talk when, when they are normal. But then they, they start laughing and all over. We are told we must be sober at all times. So that if Jehovah wants us to send his Holy Ghost and to speak to you, you are sober to receive instructions. Praise the Lord. You are ready. Sober, 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 sober. If he wants to speak, he can speak to you. Hallelujah. We are being told to put on the armor of God, verse 8 of the same verse. We are being told to put on the armor of God. And if you, I don't have time to read it, but if you can go back to Ephesians 6, you will, will give you about the arm of God. But here we are being told in verse 8, but in verse 8 of Thessalonians 5, the first epistle. But since we belong to the day, let us do what? Let us be sober, put on faith, love as a what? As a breastplate and hope. What are these things? What are these things? The armor of, of God. As you prepare for the end time. The Bible says, the sword of the spirit. Amen. So we must put on the armor as we prepare for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are being told that we may comfort one another. Praise the Lord. This is not time for Christians to fight each other. Let me tell people of God, if someone who is born again has backslidden, eh? And then we make them go away from God and not bring them back to Christ. We are doing worse. Praise the Lord. They should not get lost in our, in our, in our hands. It is true. Actually, I'll tell you what the Bible tells us somewhere here. We are being told that let them, warn them, warn the unruly, verse 14, warn the unruly and the disorderly. Are you seeing that? So don't be silent. Praise the Lord. But you must warn them. If your brother is in sin, maybe a sister, this is sin. Brother, this is 
We have been told what? As we prepare for the end time, we must warn the unruly and the disorderly. Praise the Lord. We will warn them. For those who are heartbroken, let's comfort them. We must edify and build one another. As we prepare for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must edify and build one another. Praise the Lord. Someone, I feel I'm, I'm tired. I've waited for too long for my marriage. I'm tired. You should come and tell them, brother, sister, you know what? Jehovah is God. You are a source of strength to them. You encourage them. You're not telling them, we, 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 edify. Build up. Praise the Lord. Edify. Build up. Praise the Lord. You know, let me tell you, this journey is not easy. You know that? It's not easy. The work of salvation is not what? It's not easy. Me, one of the things I do is that I will assume like nothing happened, I will deal with you the way Christ will deal with you now. Because Jesus told the woman, I can already see. I can see. I, I can see you have many husbands. The only thing the woman did was what? She accepted her mistakes. I'm very neighbor, neighbor. You need to accept your mistakes. Praise the Lord. Accept your mistakes. She didn't tell Jesus, I am not. She said, I can see you are a prophet. So, Jesus, by the end of it, the woman became an, an evangelist. Because she found edification from Christ. She was built up. Christ did not look at her past. And today, Christ is not looking at your past. He's saying, edify. Build up. Now, let's look at, 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 at verse 12 and 13. And I will ask you to read for us verse 12 and 13 because this is very critical. Verse 12. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Verse 13. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Praise the Lord. Please be kind to, to God's servants. Amen. Be kind. Sometimes we are too harsh, eh? Yeah. Be kind to them. They are human beings like you. Praise the Lord. They are what? They eat like you. The only difference is that they, are, they have a calling. Praise the Lord. Be kind. The Bible says, esteem them with love. Esteem them with what? Highly in love. Live a peaceful life among yourselves. Hallelujah. Born again, people, your homes must be the place of peace. Hello? You know, some people, if we tell you, can we, can we bring a fellowship in your house, Autaki? Because your neighbors, there's a fellowship. They'll wonder, they a fellowship, these guys, these guys are not born again. They always fight every night. So neighbors on our jua, nikukimbiana tu, mbio, kuku 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 kuku. No wonder you're told bring fellowship home. You can't. No, I don't like people. <laughs> no, no, I don't. You know what you're hiding. We are being told that in these last days, as we prepare, we must live in peace. Make peace with your with your brother. Make peace with your sister. How can you wait? Now tell me, if rapture is coming and you are not living in peace, do you think you'll be taken? Make peace. Praise the Lord. Make peace. Make peace with your brother and sister. Make peace with your husband. Make peace with your wife. Make peace with your children. Praise the Lord. I tell you, this is not a gospel you'll hear daily, but I'll teach you. Because God has made me to be here to prepare people. He is coming back again. And I want all of us to have an urgency for the gospel. Urgency for the gospel. Urgency as a person, as a family. 
We are told to console the, the broken hearted. We console the broken hearted. And we sustain the weak and the strongless. We sustain them. Praise the Lord. Now we have been told to rejoice always. Now, please underline if you have your Bible here. Rejoice. How many of us only thank God? We are, we are always happy when there's money. Just be truthful. How many of us only we celebrate God when there's money? And when there's no money, do you talk? In that home, do people talk? You find husband is not talking. And I'll lose a rent. Children are not talking. Dad, you've not paid our school fees. Hello? We have been told rejoice. Always. Let me tell you something. The times are tough. So if you don't rejoice, you'll die early. While God still has some work for you. You find Christians who die before their time. Because you, you are gloomy the whole day. I won't get you. Money or no money, you rejoice. Praise the Lord. Husband or no husband, you rejoice. Wife or no wife, you rejoice. Job or no job, you rejoice. Hello? Thick times or, or, or good times, you rejoice. Pray. Now hear me carefully. We are being told what? Pray. Please read. He's saying what? But how? What does he say? Pray what? So, are we just being told to pray? How do we prepare for the end time? We must do what? Pray without ceasing. It means pray continually. Someone has died. Oh, Jehovah, thank you. I bless you. You are king of glory. You are the one who giveth and you taketh. Glory be to your name. Some of us are bitter with God for years. God, why did you do this? God, why? God, let me tell the people of God, he is sovereign. Do you ever ask him, when a child is born, do you ever ask him, Lord, why have you brought this child? What do we do? We celebrate. Is that true? Do we celebrate? Then why do we ask him when he is second? So, when he brought, we celebrate. When he takes, we are bitter with him. That's why he told to pray continually. This is a hard gospel, but it's the truth of the word of God. Pray continually. Without ceasing. Praise the Lord. Pray continually without ceasing. Giving thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ. Look at this. Please underline that in your, your Bible. Verse 17. Pray continually. And giving thanks in all circumstances. For this is what? Is God's will for you in Christ. That is the attitude of end time preparation. Praise the Lord. Pray continually, giving thanks to him in all circumstances. For it is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Some of us, you could be going through very tough times. God is preparing you. You're being prepared as a missionary. A missionary must have a, a tough heart. Praise the Lord. A missionary must have a tough heart. Now you're being prepared. And you are complaining to God. God is preparing you because there's work ahead. Now, as I try to finish, we have been told this. Do not quench the spirit. Now, hear me carefully, people of God. You cannot prepare for the end time if you don't acknowledge the Holy Spirit of God. You must be close to the Holy Ghost. You must be close to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. You must be close to the Holy Spirit. You must allow him to guide you in every process. You're told, do not do what? Don't quench the spirit. Do not quench the spirit. Hallelujah. Please get back to, to your place with the Holy Spirit where he can speak to you. 
where he can comfort you, he can guide you. Where he can be your allos paracletos. Praise the Lord. Can be your comforter. Even things that your husband or wife cannot do, he will do it. You could be single. You lost someone. You're all there. The Holy Ghost is the one who can comfort. He's your strengthener. Praise the Lord. He's your advocate. He's there to fight for you. So don't quench the Holy Ghost. That's why when we began, I said that song, salvation belongs to our God. Be to him. We are being told, as I finish, do not treat prophecy with contempt. Praise the Lord. That's why you should prophesy more. My neighbor, you should prophesy more. It says in the last days, what will God do in the last days? I will do what? I will pour my spirit upon what? All flesh. Old men will do what? Will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. Young men will do what? Will see visions. And they'll do what else? They'll prophesy. Do not despise prophecy. It is in the gospel. But we are told something. But test. Praise the Lord. Test. Test them all. So do not, so you know, do not treat prophecies with contempt. But do what? Test them. Test them. So don't quench the Holy Ghost. Some of us, why we can't move even in ministry is because we have we, we left the Holy Spirit of God. We have neglected prophesying. Saying in the last days, the Lord was not foolish when he said it in the last days. He knew in the last days, I will pour my spirit. Old men will keep dreaming dreams and they'll keep giving, getting instructions from God. Young men will keep seeing visions. Men and women, they'll keep prophesying. Don't treat with contempt the prophecy. But when you told what? Test. 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 Hallelujah. Never test. And how will you test them? Fruits. Praise the Lord. If someone comes and prophesies, do you remember Saul? When he went in the midst of the, of the prophets, what happened? Was he a good man? Did he, did he prophesy? Did God use a donkey? In the story of Balak and Balaam. Was the, don was the donkey born again? Hear me carefully. When there is no one on earth who can hear the Holy Ghost, who can hear God, he can use a donkey to speak to people. Right now, there are floods all over. You think God is not speaking? God is speaking. That's why I said, in all things give thanks. If man refuses to prophesy, the clouds will prophesy. The rivers will prophesy. If man refuses to do the work of God, if people have refused to open the doors of their homes for salvation, for the gospel, then the floods will come and pull them out of their homes and take them to a school to be refugees there and the gospel will be preached to them. Hear me carefully. Even if you refuse to open your home for the gospel, the Lord can speak with the clouds. He can speak with the sun. That is my home. No, no people. He will create floods in that home. You will go somewhere to a refugee camp. There you will go, you will hear the gospel. God wants to speak to his people. These are the end time. He wants every child of God to be alert, to be ready, willing to hear instructions and to take instructions. Hear me finally. He says this, hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Praise the Lord. Hold on to what is good. 
Reject every kind of evil. Wana sesana. We must practice what is good. Kama wewe unakuwa na daro chafu, toa roho chafu. If you don't like seeing other people prosper, you start loving good for them. You mean to reject evil. You find people who are born again but they are planning evil against their brothers and sisters and they're in church. And then you come and hug each other. It's like the, that kiss of of Judas. The Judas kiss. You betray your sister. You betray your brother. You have been told in the end time, do good. Reject every kind of evil. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to finish. Put for us the scripture and please read for me. And us look at Revelation 20. And us to see what 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 is happening. Revelation 20 from verse 10. Hallelujah. I love this. I love this. Actually, let me let me see you I, I, I can Revelation 20. Let me read this for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Let me give you some context. Now look at this. So, we are told I told you that for a thousand years what will happen? The devil will be put in prison. After the thousand years, he will be released. Listen carefully. He will be released for what? For a while. For a what? So let's look at, at verse 7. Then when the a thousand years are over, Satan will do what? Will be released from his prison. So a thousand years. Imagine a thousand years. Gospel unapatua do woko ke nobe do mekata. Now you're told he will be released. Now look at this. What will he do? But they, let me tell you, Shetani, he knows his, his, his end. It was declared. The only thing he wants, anataka wafuasi wengi. Hello? His fate is sealed. Bottomless pit. Praise the Lord. The only thing he wants is what? Now look at this. After he's released for a thousand years from prison, what does he do? He will go out. To, please read. To do what? to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth gog and magog and to gather them for battle yani hata vile ametolewa anajua because his fate is sealed hiyo anataka nini wafuasi he wants what agents my neighbor neighbor don't become an agent of satan become a child of god serve god in number They are like the sand of the seashore. They cross across the breadth of the earth and surround the camps of God's people and the city he loves. Look, look at this. Yani he has been given another chance. He still wants to bring more more with him. This is serious. And that's why we must find agency. The enemy any ametolewa prison. The first thing he's doing, he wants more people. And is now This time he's not just coming. He's coming with a battalion ready for battle. And God's children are asleep. Some of you you carry giftings. You carry anointing, but you don't know because you are asleep. You don't know what God has put in you. Hear carefully. Hey! But the fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophets had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever, sealed. Even after he's released and he goes to get more people. Where kuna kwa na yeye enda tu. But you know. Praise the Lord. We are told those at that point those who had died during the time of tribulation were done what were raised then after the devil is dealt with hey hey neighbor judgment now we ambao libaki sasa unikuja nini kuja judgment 
Praise the Lord. His fate is sealed. People of God, there's no need to worry about the enemy. His fate is sealed. Question is, are you prepared for the end for the coming of Jesus? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Preparation means you follow what we have said in the word of God. We have not read a story book. We have read the book of the word of God because this is the word of God. Praise the Lord. I love this. I saw a great white throne and him was seated on him. The earth and the, and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened. Look at this. Books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done and recorded in the books. Now, hear me carefully. There is a book of life. What do you think about you is being written? What do you think is being written? What do you think is being written about you? Because you know, whatever you do on earth, in a final nini, the future, it is being written. Jesus is coming back again. We must prepare for his coming. The devil is defeated. His fate has been sealed. Not to then death and heads were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone, look at verse 15. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown where? Was thrown where? So who was thrown to the lake of fire before? Who was thrown there? So do you want to join the devil? Or do you want to celebrate with Christ Jesus in heaven? Then we must prepare. The fate of Satan is sealed. It is sealed. Fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur. And where the beast, are you seeing, and false prophets, don't, let me tell you people, don't worry about, the Bible tells us, keep prophesying, senior, but test them. False prophets, don't worry, we know, we know their place. False prophets, wakona nani? Shetani. Wanatupo wapi? We know, we know their faith, don't worry about them. You keep prophesying. Because you, you are admonishing the word of God in the last days. Because you'll be coming here in the middle of this. You are in, 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 a, in, a, in a worship season. Time of worship. God speaks to her and she prophesies to you. You don't need a prophet to speak to you. You are there in prayer. The Lord uses you to speak. And you, and, 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 and you speak. And you write what the Lord wants. Praise the Lord. I want to challenge you today. Let's prepare for his coming. Let's not live like... There's a, there's a tomorrow. We look towards the future with Christ. We are not worried about the future. We are worried about now. Are we with him? I want us all to rise. Shabro Sokrana de Sabri Kanara Gradoshanama. Brosa brejenera adzi krodozora jenara gradiu arojenama. Zabro jenera brigatoza razera briga nara zekrada. Mari jenera brigrozo krojenama abri generira. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, we want to submit to you. We want to give our lives to you. We want everything in us, Lord, to be given to you. Lord, we don't want to live our own lives. We want to live lives, oh God, that exalts you. Lives that give you honor and praise. Lives that magnify your name. 
Jebari ne desire bria. Krana abrozuri bina brezire grenara boria. Lord, we want to live lives worthy before you. Come on, child of God, lift your hands. Tell him, Lord, I want to prepare for your second coming. I am tired of living a normal life. I am tired of living in sin. I am tired of living without a purpose. Today, Lord, I've heard your word. There is a plan for me. There is a purpose for me. There is a reason why I am alive. Lord Almighty, no donkey will be used in my place. Lord, no rock that shall praise you in my place. Lord, no river that will be used in my place. No sun or any weather that will be used in my place. Tell him, Lord, I surrender. Sharami brizi grena brizera brezere graba. Dra 